Hello everyone, welcome back to our From Zero to Hero video series. As always, my name is Francisco Costa and today we are going to talk about application design in OutSystems. So far, we got to know the basics of what OutSystems can do. You know about data models, logic, screen, blocks and architecture. These are the tools that you must know how to use and combine them all to make the application that your project needs. Today, we will give you an overview on how to design your project from start to finish. All right, so let's dive right in and get started. If you have not seen all our videos up until this point and you are new to OutSystems, we really advise you to have a look at them before coming on this one. Otherwise, you might struggle a little bit to understand the concepts that we're going to talk about here today. If you are with us since the beginning, well, congratulations are in order. We are almost at the end of our video series and you are now one step closer to becoming a hero. If you recall, we tried to give you practical examples when explaining the concepts that we talked about. We used the fictitious project for an online store. Today, we will talk on this project on how to do its application design. Every time that we start a project, whether it's starting from scratch or we are joining a team on an ongoing project, we need to know and understand one thing. What are the goals of the project and how will we achieve them? This is what will drive our decisions and will allow us to stay on course during its development. For instance, we have set out to build an online store. This store will sell products and we will need to be able to manage its stocks. The products are supplied by suppliers and there will be transactions of the products by the users of our store. This may not seem like a lot of information, but if you think about it, we can build already so much from it because these are the requirements of our application. All right, so let's start by breaking it down into concepts and we have products, suppliers, transactions and users. By default, OutSystem covers the users bit. It is a built-in system table, so we don't need to worry about that. But users really are the foundation block of our application. Let's focus on products, suppliers and transactions. A product is something that we are going to sell in our store and these products are supplied by suppliers. The suppliers are the next block of our pillar. Suppliers have products, products are another block of our pillar and products can be bought, as I said before. To track these, tra to track these transactions and to gather data about our business so that we can improve it, we will have transactions. Another core part of our pillar or a block. This last pillar is the front end. It will need to be built to allow our users to interact with our business and to the business users to insert data into the store system. Now that we have our concepts all lined up, we will need to start organizing them. If you recall our previous videos, we have three main layers, end user, core and foundation. Product, supplier and transaction will have data associated to them, so we will need to have core modules to hold that information. To follow good architecture practices, we will build each data model in a different module. This will allow our concepts to be split and to prepare the app for the future in case we want to grow our business and add more features. Those core modules will hold our data model that we have been building throughout the series. As mentioned before, the data that will be held in those data model tables will depend on what the business requires. For the front end, we can foresee that all our data concepts will need screens for each one of them, either for adding or editing suppliers in our store, adding or editing products in our store, checking all the transactions that were made in our store. From the minute that our app has a front end, we will need a theme, 
which will be placed on the foundation layers. For now, we will consider that the theme of our front-end will be the same for products, for the suppliers and for the transactions. But if you need to have specific themes for each concept, then you would need to draft a theme per concept to grant that flexibility to your application. As we did for the data model, we should also split our front ends by concept. This is a good architecture practice as it allows us to control the deploy of our developments. Imagine that you have your app ready and the next step is to improve the transactions by adding charts that will allow us to understand and clearly view our business metrics. The developments of the transactions may not impact the front end of products or suppliers. This means that we will only need to deploy the transactions front end developments to production. Production is usually the name that you give to the latest stage deployment environment. Usually we have at least two staging environments, so that is development and production, so that we have one place that is safe for us to do our developments and one to deploy all developments so that the users or the end users can use. You can have usually up to three or four, depending on your, uh, your infrastructure. This is our view and it might be one of the most debated topics of architecture. But here at Eruption, when we develop, we try to make it the most scalable as possible. The difference is in the details and these are the type of details that will make you a hero. You try to solve the challenges of the present with the future in mind and you plan for this future. Making it easier for you as a developer and for your client to grow along the journey of the project. As you can see, it started out with a single piece of information and you can already see how it has grown and the amount of work associated to it. And this is only a small part of this growth. There's a lot more features that we can add to these types of stores. To get where we are, we use a design process of three steps. Disclose, organize and assemble. This is the way to go when designing our apps. And anytime that you have more information about your business, you should go through this process to understand how new information will fit into your architecture. Now that we have our modules organized, let's name them. Naming modules follows a convention by adding something at the end of the module name. This is called a suffix. So having this standard allows us to quickly understand its purpose the elements inside it and where it fits in our architecture canvas. And this is really important because OutSystems has built-in tools that will tell us if our modules are properly placed in our architecture canvas. Speaking of the architecture canvas, on our previous video, we talked about this and its sublayers. If you have not seen it, we advise you to do so and have a look, otherwise, this might be a little bit hard to understand what is coming next. Uh, we reminded it at the beginning of the video, we do another friendly reminder now. <laughs> this reminder is because the architecture canvas sublayers are what maps our naming conventions. We will not go into all the detail, so if you need to pause the video to have a look at all the naming conventions, go ahead and do that. If we go back to our application concepts, we can now name them using the convention. Our store theme will be underscore TH. The data model modules will all become underscore CS. And our front end modules will not have any naming because the name of your front end modules shows in the URL and it is not something that is very friendly to have underscore UI in it, so we usually prefer not to have it. This is not really a naming convention, but we, we just give it a prefix to our modules to allow us to distinguish them from the OutSystems built-in modules and the other applications that you may have in your environment. 
This all leads to an organized house, which creates an organized working environment. And this is key for scalable and the key for the future. For example, we will use the prefix STO underscore so we know that all these modules are related to the store. Also, our module naming should not use the plural. The same goes for data model tables. You always want to look at the singular. It doesn't matter if you have multiple values inside it. For example, a product is the, the table represents one product. The transaction represents one transaction. You can have multiple inside the transaction table but the naming should only consider the singular. The concepts is supplier, product, transaction. The amount of data it has associated to them is really irrelevant. We hope that you found this information useful and that it will help you along your career. You can always review these videos and as always, if you have any question, just leave us a comment and we are here to help you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for all our future releases. Thank you for watching and see you soon.